This is The True Man Podcast, and I'm Ed Blonsky. I'm very interested in, well, being a true man of God. What does that mean? Well, to live a life of integrity, to live a life as if Jesus is the most important thing in my life, to live my life to tell other people about Jesus, and doing that by raising godly children, being a godly and Christian husband, and telling other people by being a pastor, a teacher, a ministry leader, things like that. And on the True Man podcast, I try to share with you some ideas on how I'm doing that. I'm developing into the leader that God wants me to be, the true man of God that he created me to be. And in doing that, I'm looking at different people, especially from history, that I can learn from. Uh, People like, well, Jesus, of course, but the saints, uh, Peter, Paul, uh, St. Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, but also like people like Martin Luther, uh, contemporary leaders like Leonard Sweet um, and C.F.W. Walther and the names you may or may not know, uh, but people that I've, I've tried to learn from, uh, brother and fellow pastors like uh, uh, my colleague Tim or my, my, my my best friends, Jeff and Steve and Mark and Kurt, who are pastors as well. On today's podcast, I want to look at someone from a little bit in history. Uh, His name is Johann Gerhardt, or John Gerhardt from Germany. And he was a Lutheran theologian, uh, pastor of pastors, and teacher. And uh, John, or Johann Gerhardt, was born in 1582, uh, on October the 17th uh, in a town called uh, Kedlinburg, Germany, and was, uh, as a young man, brought up to know his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But by the age of 15, he really wasn't sure what he wanted to do just yet with his life. What 15-year-old does, I suppose, as we look back in history, 15-year-old's in the 16th century or the 17th century, kind of knew what they wanted to do. But maybe that's why Johann Gerhard seems to resonate with me a little bit more. He didn't know what he wanted to do either. Until, at the age of 15, he got very sick, and he made a promise to God that if he would get better, then he would become a pastor. He did get better. And being a man of a young man of integrity, he tried to keep his promise. And he lived in Germany about a generation after Martin Luther. So the Protestant Reformation, Lutheranism, very prominent by the time that Johann Gerhard starts to go to school. And he does go to school. He starts to learn theology and Christianity and uh, even logic and philosophy uh, to become a pastor, to become a church worker. Uh, after a couple of years, he changed majors, actually. He be- went into medicine at the time. He took two years. Uh, and that was because his pastor, uh, Johann Arndt, also studied medicine and then became a pastor and a teacher and professor. And so Johann Gerhardt followed in his pastor's footsteps, so to speak. But after two years, he went back to theology, and he was eventually... Um, ordained and then became a teacher. He studied theology at Jena in 1603 and then was called to be a professor there. Now, Johann Gerhard was very much a man of his time. The printing press, of course, has gotten widespread recognition and everybody was writing books and Johann Gerhard was no different. You know, Luther took advantage of these books, uh, this, uh, the, of the printing press, and then wrote copious amounts of materials that were published, printed and published. Johann Gerhardt did as well. Johann Gerhardt, however, took it to another level, and he was able to use his, his experience as a medical student, his experience of following in the footsteps of a, of a pastor that he loved dearly, and his own parents who were uh, workers and servants in uh, the political system. They were leaders in their communities. He used all of that to be able to tell people about Jesus. In fact, that was his most important thing to him, 
telling people about Jesus, teaching the tenets of Christianity and telling people about Jesus. And so he wrote uh, devotional writings. He wrote theological treatises on the different doctrines of the church. And this was important to him. Eventually, Gerhardt was made a, uh, we might call him a superintendent uh, or, or maybe a bishop in certain circles. You might come across that name. He was the pastor of pastors. He was in charge of all the parishes. Uh, he was the overseer of all the parishes and the pastors uh, in his area. And he took that truly to heart. He was called what we might call in German a seal sorger. He was a caretaker of souls. He was the physician of souls in his area. And he took that very, very seriously. And he, along with Johann Mayor and Johann Himmel, were known as the Johannine Triad of Lutheran Orthodoxy at Jena, the University of Jena. And it was written about him that at that time there were three outstanding men who were teaching theology at the Academy of Jena, and all three were named John, John Mayor, John Gerhardt, and John Himmel. And they were men worthy of that name, for sincere harmony always flourished among this trio of Johns. And as long as Gerhardt was alive, no quarrels ever interrupted that. These three guys were the closest of friends, you get that impression. And they never let the world or fame get to them. They always worked together to tell people about Jesus. In fact, when Gerhardt taught, he lectured on an ent a wide variety of subjects, but there were two main themes that he always instilled in his students. One was a deep desire to study the scriptures. Always get back to your Bibles. Always get into the scriptures every single day. And for Gerhardt, that was the Psalms especially. Other books of the Bible, of course. I mean, he studied the entire Bible. He wrote uh, commentaries on, and he's well known for his commentaries on both Genesis and Deuteronomy. But the book of Psalms was his most favorite book of the Bible. You get that impression from his writings that that was his devotional book. And he spent so much time there. And that was his deep desire to tell people, and especially his students, get into the scriptures. And to in get this love for the word, he taught classes on every book of the Bible. And the second point that he desired to really get across to his students was the importance of organizing the truths of the inspired and inerrant scripture in what is called a systematic form. Now this is something that is very important, especially to Lutherans, to put the Christian faith in an easily to understand but or, or an easily to at least read form. Uh, Luther did this in the small catechism with the six chief parts. I mean, he talked about the, the Ten Commandments, and then you, you study the Apostles' Creed, and then the Lord's Prayer, and then the Sacrament of Baptism, and then the Office of the Keys and Confession, and then finally the Sacrament of the Altar. Gerhardt did that as well, and he would teach his students and anybody who would listen and read his writings on how to go about the Christian faith, learning the Christian faith. And this had the effect of being of his being able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way that really influenced many, many people. In fact, Gerhardt is known amongst, especially amongst Lutheran circles, as uh, the one who really kept the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation, the Lutheran Reformation going into the next generation, the next couple of generations after Luther. But what really touches my heart about Johann Gerhardt wasn't that he was a pastor or that he was a theologian or a teacher and dedicated so much of his life to telling people about Jesus through his teaching, through his writings. It was his family values. He was a godly husband and a godly father. He often said that he was never intended that human beings should be alone. He would certainly find Genesis 2.18, it is not good for man to be alone, to be true in his life. His first wife, Barbara Neumeyer, he was deeply in love with, and he actually wrote this about that. Lord Jesus, you instituted marriage in paradise, who was present at the wedding of Cana, and who, through the bond of chaste love, still binds the hearts of spouses today. Bless this my intention, and give me a peaceful, blessed, and stable marriage. That marriage would last for a couple of years, but unfortunately his wife, Barbara, died shortly after his one child, Johann Gorg, died 
and he was a widower for about three years or so when he met another woman and this wife he would be married to for 23 years and they had 10 children six of whom lived to adulthood and actually outlived their father and his son Johann Ernst Gerhardt became a professor at Jena and a pastor he shared his love of Jesus not only with his students not only through his writings and his preaching but also with his children who all grew up to be godly men and women and that really touches my heart as a father and should be the one thing that I want to do as a father, as a man, a true man of God, to be a godly father, a Christian father, raising my children and being to my wife that Christian man that she deserves me to be and that God created me to be. And Gerhardt, Johann Gerhardt, is someone that I like to learn more about and to read his writings so that I can become a better man of God, a true man of God. So Johann Gerhardt is a true man of God that uh, I think is well worth looking into and, and learning more about. You've got plenty of writings that have been translated into English that you can read about and, and get a flavor for how to tell people the good news about Jesus. Well, that's the True Man Podcast for today. I'm Ed Blonsky. Thanks for joining me for today. And I hope you'll join us again next time on the True Man Podcast. God's richest blessings to you.